a bit longer so it's a shame that we're moving but we've pretty much ran out of food and the Oxford Canal is so rural that like, there's literally nothing for ages so we're budging up just a little bit to the next pub so we can get a Tesco delivery to their car park so we're just going to do a quick water top up on this water point here and then reverse and go down three locks Yeah, we're at Calcut Boats Hire Company. Sorry. Ruining my shot. So we're just filling up with water and uh, while we are, we thought we'd bob into the chandlery at Calcut Boats. They've actually got loads of stuff. It's really well stocked. And of course, Wes isn't going to miss the chance to empty the toilet. I just love it so much. <laughs> He's emptying the, the cassette while we're... While we're here. All right, facility's done, and the harbour is just rocked up just in time to share the locks with, so we're going to go down with them. Okay. One lockdown. You always get a lot of different like groups of people. The ladies on the boat are quite nice, but the guy whistled at me. Down. One of the guys is just, I don't know, it's just, maybe he's just had a bad day, but he's really grumpy. He keeps like closing the lock gates for really early, like almost scratching the boat. Keep having his time to wait. And he whistled at Amy like a, like a dog to get her attention. Ooh. And then went, oh, she's not even listening to me. I don't mind people being grumpy having a bad day, but it's. <laughs> Treating people with a basic level of respect is kind of fair enough to expect. Well, that was fun. I'm not going to go into too much detail because we don't like to be mean about people, but you know, sometimes people aren't that smiley, and I thought, you know what, that's just fine. Like, some people aren't that cheery. But he was just rude. At one point, the gate had been ready to open by like one second. And I was just looking into the marina at the boats and he whistled at me. And then mum to the other guy, so she's not paying attention, is she? I was like, mate, I didn't realize we were in such a rush. And then he just kept closing the gates on Wes, like banging into the side of the boat because Wes wasn't exiting the lock fast enough. He kept opening the paddles as well before the gates were shut. And it's just like, it's basic things like, just making sure that everyone's ready. Like, locks are dangerous. You have to be careful with it. Like, you can't just be really impatient. And I kept trying to smile at him to like break the tension a bit, and he would just go, <laughs> like, look away. <laughs> just feels so stressed in his presence. Like, it made me think we were in a rush, even though we're not. I think he thinks they're on Formula One or something. <laughs> not the canals. The canals are no time for rushing. <sighs> Well, I mean, at least we got through the lock fast. <laughs> Very quickly. Jeez. Yeah, I, I feel that Russian. <laughs> we're literally going the slowest we've ever gone. We're and we're go stuck behind way. them. <laughs> 12 hours later. There's no boats. couldn't resist filling up the washing machine one more time while we we're on the water point it just made sense so she's doing that now while we're just on this very straight empty apparently slow bit and after that that'll be the washing basket and two apart from bedding but that doesn't count my bedding doesn't count about half an hour he'll be fine <laughs> I know you all love him and you'll all defend him to the to the end of the world but he's fine everyone If you missed 
to our historic boat show. Check it out because we show a little bit about this. We really like learning about historic boats and we're getting quite good now at spotting them quite far away. We recognise Paddington and Adam from quite a distance then. These are really nice private moorings, but this makes me really nervous. <laughs> My anxiety could never. If we can get internet though, it's not great around here. Wes was just stood here on the towpath deciding which, whether we should moor up or not. And there was ants all over his toes and there's an ant's nest here. That's made our decision for us. We're budging up a bit further. It's just because the internet's bad. We're just trying to find the sweet spot. We're continuing because we want to be in this spot for two or three days at least. And there's just pretty much no internet. The one spot where there was maybe a little bit had the ant's nest. <laughs> and everyone's taken the spots that aren't under the trees. So so that's probably not going to be brilliant either. So we're just going to carry on a bit. And one of the reasons why we need to be near here is that we've ordered a Tesco shop to this pub. Because the other spot was really in the middle of nowhere. And because we've got a little bit of ground to make, we uh, tried to order it ahead which means we kind of need to find a mooring around here somewhere now. There's the pub that we are going to get our Tesco delivered to. Looks nice. It's raining. Come on, in. We've just found a spot that we can just about squeeze into and it's just started chucking it down and the internet's all right. So we're just going to stay here for a couple of days. Granted, a bit of GG is a little bit over a sign that says long-term mooring. So GG is in the allowed spot and then a little bit of her is is on the on the naughty bit. It's obviously starting to rain a lot and we really genuinely don't like bending the rules at all. So we've just been stood in the rain bickering about whether or not we should moor here. But literally the only other option is to go down the flight of about nine locks and we need to get our shop from there, so we're going with this outcome. We have come to an agreement. We're fine though, it's just, like even you can have the best communication in the world, but sometimes when you're like trying to wrangle a boat, it's raining, it's you can't stressful. hear each other because the engine's on. Sometimes you just have a little bit of a bicker, but it's fine, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make a cup of tea now. Good morning. We've come to a little car boot sale. One of our lovely subscribers, Karen, told us about it, but we don't think we've got any cash. This is the downside of being in the middle of nowhere and not having a car or anything, is that if you haven't got any cash, there's nowhere to get any. We always say we want to keep a little bit on the boat, but we always use it and then forget to replenish it. So, so we're going to see if the pub will give us any, but it's a long shot. No luck in the pub and no cash machine unless we want to walk another 40 minutes, which we don't, so I guess we'll have to skip this one. It's really windy as well and Rufus is being very annoying, so today is going well. <laughs> I do like this area in terms of it's very beautiful, but if, you've, if you're on foot, it's basically impossible to do anything. <laughs> That's what we found. There's nothing around. This was a waste of time. We could have been shielding, we could have been reading a book. We've pretty much run out of 
all food at this point. So we've been in this spot now while we wait for our Tesco delivery and it's here! Hooray! We really are just running low on supplies, like the fridge is bare, cupboards are bare, even the drawer of like many things is pretty bare. I can't wait to just have a good restock. So we've managed to get as close as we possibly can, but we're still gonna have to carry it a little way. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, it's quite a big gap. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Go on, Amy. You got it. Go, go, go. Go, Amy, go. You got it. Easy. Nice. <sighs> we did it. No, I'm so happy to have some food. <laughs> food. Now we fit all of this somehow in two cupboards and a fridge <laughs> and, and half a drawer it's time to say goodbye to our mooring that we've been in for a couple of days We've got all of our food. We're just going down about 10 locks or so towards Long Itchington. Timed it well. It's just cool. subscribers who have also got a dog named Rufus who we've met at Crick are behind us and they're on their own and there's no lockies today. They're doing really good, making good time. It's really humid today though, it's sticky. in about three days which for the record is the route that we plan to take like a month to do we had a good team going got it done and now we're gonna fill up with water at the bottom
It's funny because we've technically been cruising for like a couple of hours now at least and Amy hasn't really been on the boat at all. <laughs> She's only really gone under that bridge and that's about it. Because we've got two more locks before where we're hoping to moor. So just gotta walk ahead and set it. to moor now. I think we've got to go down three more locks because there's a lot of like private moorings along here. Where we were just moored up there it used to be a whole stretch of visitor moorings and now they've privatised them which is a shame so you basically can't moor all this way so far and the last CRT Elson point was at Braunston so yeah this area is very I don't know I feel like it's a dead zone it's beautiful but there's hardly any shops unless you want to walk like a 20, 30 minute walk. There's hardly any facilities. There's hardly any moorings like in close to the town anyway. If you want a moor, you have to add on an additional like 10 more minutes. So yeah, not to moan, but we're kind of looking forward to getting out of this area and going a little bit more built up. But three more locks until then. such a shift on those nine locks so we're tagging in some fresh raspberries for sale here love stuff like that along the canals but as you know from our failed car booting we haven't got any cash but I love some though about 11 locks done. I think we've completely lost count. And there's like a little bit of a pound before the next flight. We're just gonna stop here for tonight, for one night, because we wanna to get to Leamington Spa by Saturday, because my sister and her boyfriend are coming to visit. This looks perfect for the night. Yeah, we were thinking that was gonna be quite a tiring cruise, but thanks to that boat we went through, it was actually all right. There's quite good internet, and that is because the dog poo theory strikes again. Yes, there's a dog poo outside our home. If you've only just joined us and you don't know what the dog poo theory is, it's basically if everything else or if a mooring is really good and there's a dog poo then that's the only negative. For some reason that just seems to be a running thing that that mooring is going to be perfect. No issues, everything's going to be fine if there's a dog poo when you arrive. I'm charged with Pepsi Max. We're grabbing dog. And we're going to go on a little toddle into Long Itchington just to have a look around. Most things are probably shut, but we'll have a little walk. Might be a chippy. Might be a chippy. Typical towpath walk. <laughs> Is that actually the route? <laughs> we fish now, go on. Six foot high stinging nettles and shorts. <laughs> Watch your ankles from about a year onwards. <laughs> Excuse me. chips in the end but it was a really nice village and a lovely way to round off the cruise thank you so much for watching this episode subscribe if you enjoyed 
Huge shout out to our chip pals over on Patreon. Check us out on our socials and we will see, see you, you next time. time.